Securing data is securing. Uh, what data are you securing? Any any data that you would what want. What data are you securing? Uh, financial data, mortgage data. But on your personal data, if, you have, if uh, I have one, my birth no, certificate, my no. personal data, my verification of but who I am. Need, so I don't need Equifax but you to need, sell my data and, you, and lose my data. And my data. And I can have my data on a private either. key and say, this is me. It's immutable. It's every 10 yes, minutes. It's verified. And that's who I Max, am. Give me my Max, money. You don't need Bitcoin either. Yes, you, you can, do. Because you, it's the most can, secure. It's the you, only secure database that's ever been invented. No, that's you, the technology. You fail to understand no, that it's a new technology that is as profound as the printing press or the electric light bulb. You know, you, You're comparing it to things that you shouldn't be comparing it to. It yeah. makes no sense. You're talking nonsense. Yeah, this is yeah, look, it's a brand new see, breakthrough look, in technology. Your like, kids are gonna be wondering why their dad didn't see the yeah, value. They'll yeah, be like, is, Dad must have been on drugs because you never saw the look, value. Look, What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an awesome day today. Bitcoin basically at 0% move. Lots of the other coins are having their time to shine. Ethereum up 1%, XRP up 6.5%, EOS 5%. Why is this happening? Well, when Bitcoin goes sideways, the altcoins come out to play and Bitcoin is coming to the end of a consolidation pattern. Now look, I know we just had a massive Bitcoin move, but we are already at the end of another consolidation. So I'm expecting a big move for Bitcoin within the next several hours. In fact, I hope I can get this video out in time to let you guys know. I'm going to show you some of my key targets for the upside and to the downside. Now you can see right here, we did in fact come down and sort of test that $10,600 level. Was that the confirmation we were looking for? I want to discuss that a little bit today. Also want to talk about the fact that we have gold pumping as well as Bitcoin in a time when we're seeing traditional stocks actually falling. We're seeing that correlation separate. I want to talk about why this is so significant and what this means for the price of Bitcoin. Also, the fact that, yes, investors are still interested. In fact, Grayscale has had $1 billion in assets under management added in just the past 11 days. And I want to talk about Bitcoin hodlers, not only hodlers, but the Bitcoin whales who are keeping their money on the exchanges and what that means for the price of Bitcoin. So all of that today, if that sounds good, to you. You know what to do. Also, every single Monday, we do give away a Ledger Nano S. Comment below if you want to enter to win. And I also actually have some unfortunate news that came out from Ledger. There was a data breach. Now, don't freak out. Your coins are safe. Your Bitcoin is safe. But there was something that happened with the information of their clients, their customers. And I do think you should know about that. So we're going to go into that at the end of today's video. So big move expected for Bitcoin. If that sounds good to you, definitely consider getting subscribed. And without further ado, let's dive in. Also, guys, today's video needs to be a little bit quick. I have somewhere to be today. Wasn't going to put a video out, but this looks like a pretty exciting chart. Let's talk about it. So let's talk about the bullish scenario first. If we do have a, ch a potential chance to break out to the upside, and like I said, you guys might already know what happened. You know, like I said, this is going to happen within the next few hours. If we do take the, uh, you know, basically from the bottom to the top of this breakout right here, if we use the flagpole and put it right here, that actually gives us a target of just below $12,000. So it is very possible that within the next few days, we could see Bitcoin trading at $12,000 thousand dollars or above. Now, if we do have that breakout to the downside, that does bring Bitcoin back down to some of these previous levels to touch the, to touch the previous resistance, right? Now, you can see right here, as I said, we did have this little wick down here. Now, was that enough to really confirm the fact that we were retesting the support? Well, I'm going to get to that in just a second, but let me talk about one thing. The first thing I want to discuss right here is the fact that if we take out this right here, you can see Bitcoin was struggling right here on this trend. Okay, we hit it right here when Bitcoin pumped to about 8,700. We hit it again in October of 2019. We hit it again right here in February of the beginning of the year. And right here, you can see that we're actually being held down. So if Bitcoin does fall down from this level, we will probably retest the $10,500 level, but also we could potentially come down to this uh trend right here and continue to just consolidate all the way around to the apex of pretty much August of next year. Now, keep in mind that that would still put Bitcoin around the $12,500 level, although I know that you guys want more explosive moves than that. So 
Having a look over here, you will notice that we are pushing on the top over at CME Futures again. Now, CME's Futures has a little bit more room for Bitcoin to play around. So if we don't have the explosive move on the spot charts, you could potentially see Bitcoin over here come back down maybe to around... I mean, honestly, we could stay in this trend around the low 11,000s. Now, it is trading higher over on CME Futures than it is on the Bitcoin spot chart. But like I said, I still... I don't think this was a clear enough retest to really show that the previous resistance has turned support. I, I I'm not saying that I want the Bitcoin price to dump. I'm not saying that at all. I don't want to dump, but I would like to see Bitcoin kind of come down here and have a healthy retrace back down to around the $10,500 level with a nice bounce off of it. Then that would solidify the fact that we've had that healthy retrace right after the, you don't want to have a blow off top where we just keep going up to the moon because the faster you go up, usually the bigger and the harder you have a crash, right? So I would like to have this be a nice sort of healthy move. And for everybody out there, the volume Nazis out there, well, we did have volume. Look at this volume, guys. This shows that there was actually volume on that trade. And the most important thing, though, aside from whatever happens in the next few hours, the next couple days, well, actually, the next couple days is important because we're going to have the monthly close. And interestingly enough, that also happens on Friday, which is the last Friday of the month, which we do know we've seen some massive volatility on the CME futures contracts. Now, in past months, we have seen a lot of negative price movement on the final day of the month, right? We tend to see contracts get closed and sometimes we have a dump to the downside, but the level that we need to stay above essentially um, for short-term confirmation is above 9,600. But really, the key level right here, which Bitcoin has started to pull back to, is around $10,770. And the reason for that being is right here, when we had the massive pump of Bitcoin all the way up to $14,000 in June of last year, we closed that monthly candle out. You could see right here at the $10,700 and around $67, okay? And then we did proceed to go downwards. We tried to get above that level again in February of 2020 and we failed. So moving over to this candle, if this daily close right here can close above this close, excuse me, monthly close can close above this close of June 1st, 2019, then I do believe that we have full on 100% confirmation of the bull run. And uh, yeah, well, I don't have to tell you guys what what's going to happen after that. It is moon time, baby. So talking about what Bob Lucas said, he says time frame is important. Now he's actually looking at the three month chart. He says, I like this view. Bitcoin quarterly with a five bar average close above 14,000 is confirmation. 14,000 would be the high of 2019. So as you can see right here, guys, we are consolidating tight and tighter. We are expecting that move. Actually, we do have declining volume as well. So let me know what's going on. Maybe by the time this video is out, we already have our answer, but let's talk about some fundamentals. Let's talk about some macro, not just what's going to happen in the next couple hours. Okay. So we have gold making an all time high. And we have this happening alongside NASDAQ and S&P actually having a fall showing that there's been a decoupling. And you can see right over here, short story, zero hedge. Goldman Sachs says, real concern about the longevity of the US dollar as a reserve currency has started to emerge. Jason A. Williams commented and said, do you hear that sound? The US government and Federal Reserve are gonna print another $1.3 trillion. Look at that number for a second. And then whale alert, 120 million USDT minted at the tether treasury. So you guys following this pattern right here? And like Charles Edwards says, he says the $2,000 move in Bitcoin is all the more sweet because it happened with gold and not stocks. He says it's a tumultuous year. Bitcoin is proving itself as a safe haven, crushing all other asset classes up 50%. You just have to be patient. We are just getting started. Now, let's also talk about what's been going on with crypto fund manager Grayscale Investments, okay? This is showing interest from institutions. You can see right here, they are up another $1 billion in less than two weeks. They currently have $5.1 billion in assets under management with the majority of it being in their Bitcoin trust. 
And uh, yeah, you can see the next biggest would be the Ethereum. So not surprised to see Bitcoin and Ethereum being the highest in demand. And here's something even more interesting. Despite the recent surge in price, the Bitcoin balance on exchanges has not changed. The balance remains at around 14.5% of the circulating supply. This suggests that no deposits are being made. Also no withdrawals, but here's the thing. We saw massive decline in the amount of Bitcoin being held on exchanges all during the beginning of this month, which means that they were taking it off of the exchanges. They were putting it on their hardware wallets, their Ledger Nano S's, their Trezors, whatever wallet they use, meaning that they are not looking to sell. And even with all of this massive price action, we haven't seen massive deposits of Bitcoin. In fact, we actually see Tether minting Tether. So what are you going to do with all of this USDT? Hmm probably buy some Bitcoin and altcoins, right? Not saying that we couldn't see a short-term dip, but on the macro scale, definitely looks like we're going to have a pump. Definitely looks like it's going to go to the upside, right guys? So let's talk about this tweet from Robert Kiyosaki. He says, New York City is going broke. All cities count on income tax, sales tax, and real estate taxes, especially commercial. Um, Add pension contribution for teachers, firefighters, police, USA going broke, Fed printing fake money cannot save you gold silver, Bitcoin, save yourself. Now, let's talk about the data breach, guys. So you guys know I do use Ledger. I'm a huge fan of Ledger. We give one away every week on the channel. They are my go-to hardware wallet. So they did, in fact, have a data breach. Now, if you have bought something from them, you probably got this email. Ultimately, they basically uh, had their database compromised, and what happened was a third party was able to get access to a bunch of information. So according to this, the email address is almost 1 million people. That's a lot of people. The firm added that for a subset of about 9,500 of those 1 million customers, details such as first and last name, postal address, and phone number were exposed. The company claimed the API keys used to access the data has soon been deactivated. So what does this basically say? Well, it says that everything is fine. Your ledgers have not been compromised. Your Bitcoin, your altcoins, they're all safe. But 9,500 customers did in fact have their information leaked. This shows the flaws with centralized systems, okay? This has nothing to do with Ledger as far as their products are concerned. This actually has to do with centralized data being compromised. So this is really why we're going towards a sense of decentralization. But long story short, yes, there are about 9,500 people out there that unfortunately, somebody knows your name, somebody knows your address, and somebody knows that you're probably holding cryptocurrency. So be safe out there. And also guys, be careful now that this uh, you know data breach has happened because now somebody out there has your information. They know that you bought a you know, ledger from them. So if you do get an email, please be very safe. There might be phishing links. Don't click on any links that you don't know. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And always verify that it's coming from the actual source ledger. Okay. And if you're concerned, reach out to the team and ask them, don't take any chances with your Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Okay. But on some brighter news today. So today is the absolute launch of Shelly. We are moving from Byron to Shelly for Cardano. People are totally pumped about this. The team stated that no interruptions to the blockchain's normal operations uh, you know, should be expected. Elaborating quote that this is the moment when Shelly comes alive on mainnet, introducing features like staking pools, delegation, and rewards, opening up a new era of decentralization for Cardano. Everyone out there that's been hodling your ADA for my Cardano fans, congratulations. It has been a long time coming. Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson is extremely optimistic. In fact, you can see in his tweet right here, he says, this time next year, I predict there will be hundreds of assets running on, on Cardano thousands of dApps, tons of interesting projects, and lots of unique use and utility. 2021 is going to be so much fun watching Cardano grow and evolve. The community is definitely ready to innovate. So it has definitely been a long journey. Lots of, um, I don't want to say setbacks, but let's just be honest. These guys, they do a lot of peer reviews. They're very meticulous about the way that they release their 
um, you know, update. So congratulations to Cardano. And also big news for Australia. We have Australian telecom giant enabling Bitcoin payment support. So customers of A1 Telecom subsidiary will now be able to make cryptocurrency payments based on a recent collaboration with the Austrian crypto payments processor Salamantex. So quote, they say with A1 payment businesses across Austria. Oh, is this Austria? Oh my goodness, it's Austria. I'm sorry, guys. I, I thought this was Australia. It's Austria. Yeah, definitely read that too fast. Well, it's still big news. It's still good, okay? Whether Australia, Austria, still good news. Um, basically, now companies with only one terminal have the possibility to accept these currencies alongside conventional payment methods. So there you go. A little bit of adoption for you guys. Having a look right here. How are we doing? Oh my goodness, look at Bitcoin just winding up at the end of this. Yeah, we are, we're gonna have that breakout. Um, I mean, I'm hoping to the upside, guys, but you know, it has been a crazy run. We might need to have that retest back at around the 10,005. Oh, and just to say, even if we do have a breakout to $12,000, that still doesn't mean that we couldn't have that retest down to those lower levels. And you know, if we were to retest down to about the 10-4 level, you could see like a 12 to 15% Bitcoin drop before having that bounce. Just keep that in mind. Either way, neither of those situations is bearish, whether we break to the upside or the downside. The most important thing is that we come down and we retest that level at around the $10,400 level, which is, I totally lost my place, totally lost my place. Where is it? Right here. So that is basically what I'm looking for. Thanks for coming back to the channel. I know today's uh, video was a little bit quicker than usual, or at least I spoke very fast. I tried to cram as much info in it as possible because I definitely got to get out of here, got to take care of some things today. You guys rock. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens, guys. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident about the markets right now. If we pump, feels great. If we retest, that's also a confirmation of bullishness. So see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for coming back. Get subscribed. Join the free telegram. Yada, yada, yada. You know the drill. Thanks again. My name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Till next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.